So, I've had this Mafex Hush Batman, or Mafex, however you want to pronounce it. Anyways, I've had this on pre-order since I think June of 2019. I have been looking forward to this thing for so long, and it's finally here. After being pushed back months and months, uh, not, not only because of COVID-19, but also because Mafex never has any idea when they actually release their stuff, uh, it's finally here. Uh, well, it's been here for a while. I'm kind of late to the party on reviewing it. But this has been hyped just from the looks of it as being the best 6-inch Batman action figure ever made. Is it perfect? No. Is this the best 6-inch Batman action figure ever made? Uh, yeah. <laughs> At least when it comes to the comic book style. When it comes to the classic, sort of generic Batman, this is the best. You know, not counting Christian Bale or Ben Affleck or any other iteration of Batman. As just comic book Batman, this is it. This is the best one. You don't like that it's blue? Hey, a black version's coming out soon, so you can enjoy it in black. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is by far my favorite Batman action figure. I knew when I made that list a while ago of my top 10 favorite Batman figures, this would be the crown king once it happened. And this figure's come out, it's happened, and it is without a doubt my favorite. Uh, <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, and it's not just because it's, you know, super poseable or blah, blah, blah. It speaks to me on so many levels. And when a toy speaks to me, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it just, it's great. This is one of my favorite six-inch figures, period. It's definitely my favorite Batman. Uh, it's only my second Mafex. Uh, the other one I have is the Iron Man Mark 45, which that was kind of before they really got their QC in check. So that figure's not... I mean, the figure on paper is gorgeous and is articulated to the teeth, but he's kind of loose. Not kind of, he's very loose. Uh, but this figure's amazing. And uh, let's just get down to it. So this is what you get right out of the box for his base body. You have his gritty sort of like er head, which is probably the best head. It says so Batman. I mean, look at that head. It's so Batman, and I love it. And he also has his fists, which these are his fully closed fists. You can see left and right. Or actually, no, I might have. Oh, I goofed up, guys. I goofed up. Spoiler alert. He comes with a fully closed fist uh, in the box. But he also, you can see, has like a fist with a little hole in it. Which you could not only, you know, have as a fist, but you might also be able to stick an accessory in there. But yeah, he's supposed to have that on. Sorry, guys. Spoiler alert. Anyways, yeah, you get that. But let's just talk about all of the accessories. Because he comes with so many. So, accessory time. He comes with, like I said, normal closed fist. He comes with the slightly opened fist. Right there. He has splayed out hands for left and right, which are super expressive, and I love. His hands are super easy to swap, by the way. He has these really nice hands for uh, kind of gripping on to the batarangs. These are really good batarang hands, and I love these hands too. He has these kind of calmer open hands, which I enjoy. They're very good for just, you know, neutral positions or, you know, maybe kind of loosely holding something. Those are really good hands. These hands are awesome. Hands where he has got, uh, he's got batarangs in between his fingers, like he's using them as claws. Amazing. I love those hands so much. Those are great. And then he has, instead of just a separate accessory, he actually has individual hands for his grapnel gun. You can see he's got a left hand and a right hand for the grapnel gun. And you may be thinking, oh, where's the grapnel? You actually have a couple options with that. You have the shorter one, which that is a metal rod right there. And you can just pull, uh, go in, which is nice. And you have a long boy, which is super great for dynamic poses. I've had him pose where it looks like he's falling and he's kind of grappling up. Uh, check out my Instagram. I'm not. I'm actually not going to post him in the video. Uh, check out my Instagram. I actually took some shots of this guy just messing around on my desk, and I got him in some really awesome poses. So yeah, he's got those grapnel guns, and I mentioned batarangs. So let's show those. He's got these, uh, whoop, wrong battering. He's got these sort of more curved batarangs, which I enjoy personally. I think those are really nice. I like those for, you know, more swooshy action. But if he's just posed with a batarang, I like these ones a lot. I like these a lot. He's got two each. And then alternate head time, he's got this er head, 
which I might pop on him later. Unfortunately, mine has a little blemish on the head, but it's no biggie. Actually looks really good, though. I love the gritty teeth. It actually looks really good. Most, you know, ep you know, more er expressions for Batman don't look the best. But that one actually looks really good. And then, you get a Bruce Wayne neck and head. Which, oh my gosh. I know this is based off of Jim Lee's Hush Batman art. But even just looking at this gives me animated series vibes. Like, it seriously kind of looks like animated series Batman. And I love that. And kind of in a different style. I mean, it's Bruce Wayne, you know. Kind of from the same era as well. So, yeah. Um, I love this. I love this head. And I'll definitely show him with that on. And then, he also comes with Mafex Display Base. Which I know some people don't like these a lot. Me personally, I'm actually quite the big fan. Because uh, the clamp, they're not. it's not super tight, but it wraps around the body at a perfect loop. And he holds in there. And you can rotate it. The hinges are nice and tight. Uh, this, this display stand has yet to uh, let me down. And you have a couple spots. You can reposition it. You can rotate it at the base. This is a pretty good display stand, man. I really like it. And just to show you how effective it is. Let's get him kind of just in there real quick. And you can see, like, it's holding up his weight. He's just kind of floating there like a specter. But <laughs> it works. You can get him in jumping poses, lunging poses. It's amazing. Anyways, let's talk about those poses and the fact that he can get into them. Because we've spent long enough talking about the plethora of accessories. So, first bit of posability I want to talk about is this giant cape. Some people don't like the cape. Some people don't like Batman with a big cloth cape. Some people might actually want to replace this cape. And if you want to, you can. Uh, this collar piece is a separate piece. It's just glued on. You can not actually pry it off and take the cape out. Uh, I actually kind of know that firsthand because uh, it was popping out. And you can see it's still kind of popping out. You can see the peg right there. It's actually supposed to be more pegged into the body. But I actually had to re-glue it and reset the front parts of the cape. That's why sometimes if it gets out a little bit, you can see where the cape was glued underneath. But yeah, I had to uh, I had to reset the neck collar, which wasn't super fun, but hey, just a little thing I had to do. But the cape is huge. Uh, he is, he's got such a big cape, it's not even funny. Like, just look at that cape span, man. It's amazing. And it is wired. It's wired on the front. Which, this is the best wired cape I've ever seen. Some people think it's too much. Some people think this cape is too much. And I understand why. But, like, look. Look, just with the wire, look at how it's swooshed. It can swoosh so well. It can swoosh back. It can swoosh forward. Like, look at that. It's like he's... Like, I almost did nothing to him. Maybe just move his fist. Look at that. Just look at that. Oh, my gosh. Just with the cape. The cape itself is so expressive. And you do have a second set of wires. Unfortunately, this is a minor complaint. The second set is uh, only two. It's only two kind of notches in the cape down. There's a second set. And I feel like it should have been... Because if you look at the full cape, you have a combined total of, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten notches in the cape. You know, these little things, those danglies. I feel like the second set of wires should have been closer to the center. Should have been right there. Because I've had issues where, like, the sides are superposed, right? But then the, the back just droops. I feel like there should have been one more wire running down the center or maybe just moving those down a little bit or closer to the middle. Because I've just had that... Um, it's a minor complaint. The cape is still super poseable and super fun. And I almost have more fun posing the cape than the figure itself. But the figure is also super fun to pose. Let's kind of get the cape out of the way. What you can do, like look at that. You can just fold the cape back and the wires. It does kind of bunch up with the shoulders a little bit, but come on. It's a it's a six inch action figure. Do you expect it to look perfectly natural? It's got cuts and joints all over his body. It's not the most natural thing. But look, you can get the shoulder, you can get the cape over the shoulders and it doesn't look bad. But yeah, look at the body, man. Look at the physique. He's got shading all down his body. Even on the blue, he's got some shading. He's got the pouch belt. He doesn't have a yellow oval on his bat chest, which, you know, the bat symbol with the yellow oval. Not the biggest fan. Looks like a giant target. So 
I love that design. He's got he's got treads on the boots, which is kind of funny. It looks like they're letters. It's kind of funny. W W V. I, I can't tell. Uh, but yeah, I mean the physique looks great. It looks really good. I mean the head looks great. It's just it's amazing, man. I mean just look at him. He's got the spikes on the arms, which don't worry about breaking those because they are softer, which I appreciate. And they're not just going to warp either. They're soft, but they're rigid enough to, uh, you know, to hold their shape. And then the bat ears are also a little softer, so you don't have to worry about breaking those. Yeah, it's it, it's so fun, man. This is such a fun figure. I love it. Articulation. He's got ball joints at the head and the neck. Gives you a lot of range. And let's just pop that off and pop on this head just to show. It's really easy to do. And just to show you the range on this head as well. So yeah, you have that. And uh, then the shoulders are on butterflies, which are a little creaky. Uh, yeah, I don't like creaky figures, uh, but unfortunately he's just got a little bit of creak. Ball joint at the base of the shoulder, and then a universal hinge out there. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. He's got kind of the universal sort of Revel Tech joint at the wrist there. And then he's got a lot of torso range. He's got one at the abs. At, kind of at the upper chest, and then he has one at the waist. You can get a lot of rotation out of it, too. It's pretty great. He has drop-down legs, which afford you a pretty good range forward. And pretty far out. Not all the way out, but still all right. He does have a thigh swivel, but it's not the best. His knees, oddly enough, one kind of minor complaint. His knees aren't perfectly straight. They just, they just aren't. I don't know why, but it doesn't really bug him too much. His leg can bend pretty far, which I do appreciate. And it looks nice and natural, too. I like that. And then he's got the the feet that can move up and down pretty well. He's got really good tilt on those feet. And he's got toe articulation, which is actually pretty useful for some poses, uh, especially if you have him on that display base. Hey, look! You get to see what I was talking about. <sighs> I'll have to re-glue that. So, I guess in my... In my haste of popping the head on and putting it, it came unglued. So here, let's take a look while we can. So there's pegs up there, and there's actually holes in the cape. I don't know if you can see that right there. The hole in the cape actually goes into that peg. That was actually really hard to do, and I can't wait to redo it. And then you kind of get it back in, and then you, like, push it in. But it has to be glued. It has to be glued, because it's just going to want to pop out again. So I'll have to re-glue that. Oh, irritating. I hate that the factory glue wasn't strong enough. As you can see, like, you get it in there, and there's kind of a, it's kind of a squeeze. And the neck kind of squishes it as it pops in. So yeah, that's unpleasant. Oh well, we're almost done, actually. Uh, so it's no biggie. It's no biggie. I'll just re-glue it after I'm done. But yeah, you can get him in so many awesome poses. Uh, you've probably seen plenty of ACBA of him by now. He is remarkable. Really sucks that it had to happen on camera. Uh, at least it didn't break. I'll just have to re-glue that because the factory glue just wasn't strong enough. And it didn't hold it. So now I'll have to re-glue that. Uh, irritating. Come on, Batman. Why you gotta do me like this? Oh well, just just ignore the fact that that's kind of pushed up, because now pretty much the last thing we got to do is comparisons. <sighs> that is, <laughs> it's so irritating. It's kind of funny when I first unboxed him. I'm like, why does it look a little off? And I'm like, oh, that's because his collar is completely disassembled. Nice. So, anyways, that aside, I don't know if that happens to anyone else's copy, but it's happened to mine. Uh, some comparisons. Here it is with my other giant cape, Batman, my old Mattel one. Which, this one doesn't have a wire in the cape, it's just a giant cape. And yeah, uh, definitely kicks its ass. Uh, proportionally, um, look-wise, I still love this Batman, though. I still love it. But this is by far my definitive Batman. So there's that one. Now, I actually had this front and center for a while, because I knew once this came in, you know, you would go to the wayside. And then here it is with what I considered my one of my favorite Batman figures before I got this. The DCUC mold. I still love the DCUC. Uh, I'm not a big fan of plastic capes, so I'm definitely happy I have a, a nice Batman with a super nice big wired cape that you can get in so many crazy awesome poses. 
So there's that. And if you want to see like some kind of crazy awesome poses you can get with that cape. Like, you know, there's plenty of pictures. You can check out my Instagram link in the description. And then finally, here it is with the Batman that most of everyone considered the definitive beforehand. The uh, DC superheroes kind of select sculpt version of Batman. But you can see both of them are gray and blue Batman. Uh, you can definitely see where my complaint where it was where this blue is just too bright and the gray is just too dark. I mean, this gray is about the same level of dark, but they darkened the blue as well, and that really helps. Because the brighter blue with the darker gray just doesn't work for my brain. And he also does have a plastic cape, and it doesn't go over the shoulders at all. And I love when Batman has a cape that goes over the shoulders. It just gives him such a cooler silhouette. Uh, but yeah, there we go. It's pretty much it. Unfortunately, we had a little bit, what would you call it, an on-camera break? I mean, it was just glue that came undone. Uh, but yeah, that is unfortunate. <laughs> I'll have to go back and do that. If that does happen with yours, um, I definitely advise a little dabble do ya. And I actually use a toothpick to kind of really sort of try to get it in there. It's not too hard. It's just irritating. And it's probably going to keep coming undone. Um, so yeah, whatever. It's all right. But yeah, I love this Batman figure. Absolutely my favorite Batman. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, it's it's expensive. It's a Mafex figure. It's expensive. This is like a $60, $70 figure. Uh, and then after import costs, uh, especially right now with coronavirus, if you get it from Japan, you have to spend way more on shipping. Which, believe me, I had to spend a lot on shipping. Probably the most I've ever had to spend on shipping ever. It's like 35 bucks for this and a couple Gundam models uh, from HLJ. So, yeah. Um, I, I love this thing. I think I'm done rambling. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.